And mom's different. And mom's literally, mom is overweight and old, and she would probably still say yes. Previously on Fundy Fridays. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. This is Fundy Fridays, and here we talk about fundies while I do my makeup. We call it kind of like a wheel, and there are certain spokes in the wheel. Each wife is a spoke in the wheel. Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. I am Jen and this is Fundy Fridays and here on my channel I talk about different aspects of Christian fundamentalism while I do my makeup. And today is an update on a video that is um, probably one of my oldest videos. I think it's still pretty funny um, and if it's not blocked in your country by Discovery Communications I highly recommend that you go check it out. And in case you are wondering, yes I do still have an account on sisterwives.com uh, because they won't let me delete it. So if you find me on there just know that your secret is not safe with me. In all seriousness, I really needed to update this video because not only does it have the camera quality of a potato, um, there's been a lot of bombshell news coming out of the Brown family, the, the Sister Wives um, TV show, and uh, I really think we need to talk about it. In fact, so much stressful shit has happened since my 2019 video that uh, it might even make your hair fall out. Never mind. Sister Wives is a reality show on TLC that portrays the lives of a polygamist family, the Browns. The patriarch is Cody, and he uh, he really tries to recapture his youth by buying sports cars and having terrible haircuts. Uh, <laughs> he has four wives, Mary, Janelle, Christine, and Robin. As one might expect from a household where four families compete for access to a part-time husband and father, this brood produces more drama than the hype house. I just want Gen Z to think I'm cool. And literally the next day after it aired, the family uh, started being investigated by the feds. More on that later. The first season of the show also documents the addition of Robin to the family. She is the fourth wife and um, after she she joins the family, things were quite literally never the same ever again. This show has been on for over 16 seasons and for well over a decade. And since it's been on that long, they've captured a lot of big family moments for these people. They've caught all kinds of stuff on camera like vacations, weddings, fights, home births, um, divorces, and even coming out parties. It's about one of your daughters being gay. When she came out, how did, how did that feel for you guys when she did that? Well, first, when she first came out, the first thing I wanted to know is, how do you know? I mean, <laughs> it's just, I can relate to my own life. I can relate to the experiences of others that they've talked to me about, and I just wasn't familiar enough, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's like, how do you know? Are you sure? And that was it for me. I felt like a bad mom. <laughs> because, for not really? because, Yeah, because, like, I had no idea. Like, like you couldn't tell prior. You're no, okay. I had no idea. It was like a big surprise, but she's so happy. Mm -hmm. You know, the relationship that she's in with Audrey, they are so happy and they're so Aww, cute together. Yeah, and I love them. them. They are so, they are so good we together. Oh, yeah. so cute. And I love what you said, love one another. I think that's the mantra that everybody should be yeah. going by. Yeah. Yeah. It's the basis yeah, of definitely. everything is yeah. love one another. So we yep. hope that everybody would embrace that. Yeah. 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 Now I recommend this show not because it's quality entertainment or anything. It is definitely just as exploitative as any other show on TLC. However, I do recommend it for the pure drama and sociological intrigue. I'm serious. I love uh, studying people and this show is just a fantastic way to do that. And a part of me thinks that might be because the women in these groups don't usually ever get a large platform to discuss how they feel um, about the relationships or their hobbies or education or just how they feel about anything. They really never get to speak out, um, partly because they have to hide, but partly because I think that's a part of their culture. I love watching Sister Wives because it is truly one of the only shows that I've seen on TLC about a religious family that actually shows the confrontations and the heartbreak that inevitably comes with such an unbalanced sexist religious practice. I mean, the Browns truly bear all on this show. I feel like I know more about Mary than I do my own family. And while most religious families a part of the Discovery Communications umbrella of protection use their shows as ministries and or recruitment tools, Sister Wives kind of accidentally became a real-time PSA against polygamy. I don't think I've ever seen any of these miserable fools smile, not once on this damn show. Sister Wives is many things, but it sure is not 
polygamy propaganda. If anything, it's the exact opposite. If you really want to watch a show that shows the slow and painful death of four different relationships simultaneously, then Sister Wives just might be the program for you. No, I have all the love I want, and you guys sometimes feel like you're pining constantly for me to, you know, give you some. I mean, the other day I was having dinner with Logan and I was like going, I have really messed this up. We, we came into this by way of commandment. We felt like we were supposed to live it and we had an ideal that it was a better way. And, and it come to a stark reality of the struggle that it is. Today I'm going to be using this yellow shade from the new Team Trixie palette. It is called Champ. And yes, I did buy the Katya one and we'll use that for a different video. Oh, honey. That is a beautiful yellow. Anyway. Uh, I suppose we should talk about Sister Wives again. Um, the Brown family used to be members of the AUB, or the Apostolic United Brethren, which is a fundamentalist sect of the Latter-day Saints, aka Mormons. And as far as I know, which should be the new allegedly, as far as I know, the AUB community does not condone underage marriage, and the women get to choose to be a polygamist, at least as much as anybody can choose this lifestyle when... To choose not to do so would actually be against a major commandment of the religion, but I digress. Fundamentalist Mormons believe in the original teachings of Joseph Smith and specifically the principle of plural marriage. Mainstream Mormons do not practice polygamy and are generally kept in the dark about the truth behind many of the troubling teachings of their own church. I grew up in the mainstream Mormon church I, and they don't practice polygamy. I had no idea there was even such a thing as polygamous. I, I mean, I live here in an area where there's a lot. I had no idea, none. I met Mary's family when I was 19. I actually met Cody a few years after that. So I, they were like my little novel polygamous friends for a long time. <laughs> I had these friends and they're polygamous, you know what I mean? I think I was 22 when I finally thought, wow, Cody's a great guy. You know what I mean? Maybe, maybe I'm okay with this plural marriage thing, you know? When I finally decided, it really didn't seem so strange. It was, it was not like this big, let me think about this. It wasn't a, it wasn't a huge jump for me. This split between the mainstream Mormon church and the fundamentalists is what spawned many of the polygamist groups that have been featured on this channel that we all know and hate. Guys, I saw Sarah Shower doing one pop of color in the inner eye, and now I'm going to do one pop of color in the inner eye. Despite physically leaving their AUB community, in my opinion, Cody and his family still likely believe in the same religion that they always have, except now they don't have a community. I know that there were quite a few um, story arcs on the show where a couple of the kids wanted to join the mainstream LDS church and they ran into problems because their parents were fundamentalists and they just didn't want that uh, baggage associated with them. So as far as I know, the majority of them are still um, at the very least Mormon. Um, I don't know about any other beliefs. This, of course, is all just my personal speculation, and I am going mostly by comments that Cody and his family have made on the show about various things. I know Cody has his own convictions against eating pork, and that's not necessarily a part of the greater uh, Mormon belief system. And with all that being said, Cody and his family actually have been quite progressive, openly accepting Mary's daughter, Mariah, who is gay. And I can't speak for the rest of the family, but I do know that Mary has been very supportive of Mariah's partner, who just came out as non-binary. I'm really starting to like Mary. I take back everything I've ever said about her. I mean, I still think she should leave Cody, but it's important for me to mention that today in this episode, I am specifically talking about fundamentalist Mormon polygamy. There are polygamists and other types of non-monogamous relationships in other religions and in secular society as well. We are not talking about any of that today, so please don't take anything negative said about the Brown family and polygamist to be indicative of how I feel about polyamory in general. That's not what we're talking about today. Ain't nothing wrong with um, open relationships, but 
That's not what this is. Mormon polygamists believe that they must attain multiple wives to get all of their heaven points. And of course, I'm being flippant because I hate the guy, but Joseph Smith commanded that men have at least three wives in order to attain godhood. Since the 19th century, the LDS church has denied that polygamy is a part of its core doctrines, and many Mormons deny that Joseph Smith was a polygamist. However, the doctrine of plural marriage, referring in this case to a man having more than one wife, polygyny, was revealed to Joseph Joseph Smith at Nauvoo, Illinois on July 12, 1843, and was enshrined in 1876 as Section 132 of Doctrine and Covenants, DNC, one of the LDS scriptures. At the same time, Section 101 in the early edition of the DNC, specifying the rule of monogamy, was removed. In this new revelation, God declares plurality of wives as essential for attainment of godhood, Article 20, and that those who reject it are damned, Article 4. And that if Emma Smith rejects Joseph's other marriages, he will destroy her. Article 54. This revelation was kept secret from the general church membership until Brigham Young made it known in 1852. Utah was not able to become a state until the Mormon church outlawed polygamy. Keep that in mind uh, <laughs> when people want to talk about states' rights. Polygamists believe that living this lifestyle is actually beneficial for all parties involved because the men get to, you know, bang multiple women, and the women must learn to rid themselves of earthly emotions like jealousy, autonomy, and boundaries. Wait. So let me start with you, Cody. You do not come from a plural family, as it is called. Your dad was not a polygamist. So what led you down this path? What made you choose polygamy? Oh, shoot. It was faith-based. Uh, it was just um, part of a faith belief, and I followed through with it, and um, this is kind of where it landed. I do not like the idea that you guys are in plural marriage with me because you were commanded to. I like the idea that we were in plural marriage together because we were in love. And to you, why did you want multiple wives? Beyond the religion, tell me specifically. You Beyond had Mary, obviously you were happy. You know, I mean, that... <clears throat> You know, and I know you're asking Cody, but it, it is a, it's faith. It's a faith decision. I really felt like we would get progression, right? The whole idea is that we overcome our crap. Yeah. The whole purpose, we truly believe, of living plural marriage is that you have to learn how to not be selfish. I, I mean, we, we, anyway. What does the faith I mean, say then? That, that's well, what I mean, the faith is about family and it's about working together and overcoming um, our faults and raising beautiful children and having a happy family and I mean at least that's the way we interpret it and many of our friends interpret it the same way. I like to call it accelerated personal development. Christine, you and I fought over the kitchen or whatever, but guess what? We had to get up the next day and figure our out because we had to, you know what I mean? Yeah. In my opinion, traditional fundamentalist Mormon polygamy simply cannot be done ethically since it is fundamentally, pun intended, based on a falsehood. The only reason that Joseph Smith commanded this lifestyle was because he was trying to cover his ass when it came to marrying a 16 year old. Yeah. Can we say that? Uh, I'll think about it. Yeah. Just say, just let us do it. If they no, can do it, we can say it. So with a foundation like that, how the hell are any of these relationships ever supposed to be successful? And I know I just talked a whole bunch of shit, but I do want to say that I have some sympathy for these adult polygamists, especially the women. If I believed that the church I belonged to was suppressing a core tenet that was directly commanded by the founder, I'd be pissed too. I mean, they believe in the original teachings and they don't care what the government says. And I can almost respect that. At least a tiny bit. But on the other hand, I don't know if anybody has ever truly consented to taking part in a polygamist family arrangement. Both the men and the women believe that this is the only way to ensure a place in the um, highest level of heaven. So it doesn't really sound like a choice to me. In that vein, I want to go to my wives and say, did you marry me because you thought you would have a good life and a loving husband and a good relationship with me? Or did you marry me because your religion commanded it? And I certainly don't want to paint a picture that all polygamists are bad. I also don't want to paint a picture that they're all progressive like the Browns either. That's if you consider the Browns progressive. But the reality is that it is a gray area and I just wanted to show um, as many sides as I could to the situation because these are real people. These are real families. There are hundreds of kids involved in these families. And I believe that everybody has the right to have whatever kind of family they want to have, but that doesn't mean that I have to like it.
Cody grew up in Wyoming and his family originally were a part of the mainstream LDS church. And then later in his life, his dad felt called to uh, live the principal. I wonder why. Cody's first wife is Mary. She also grew up in a polygamist family. Apparently her and Cody got along great and fell in love at a New Year's dance and then got married right away. Janelle, Cody's second wife, grew up mainstream LDS and she was actually married to Mary's brother for quite some time and that's how she met the family and became friends with them and she has a notoriously bad relationship with Mary that I've read. Uh, Mary was kind of a terror to live with in the early days but hey she was kind of set up for failure in my opinion. Christine, the third wife, also grew up in polygamy um, and a notable story about her courtship with Cody was that he made fun of her when she came out of a gas station with a sloppy nacho snack. Um, and that story has been repeated on both the show and in the book. So thought I'd bring that up. Robin joined the family 16 years later and she had kids from a previous marriage. She grew up in polygamy and she had apparently always wanted to be a part of a polygamist family. I don't know how she met Cody. I don't care. I really don't like her. <laughs> um, sorry, Robin, if you happen to be watching this. I don't know why you would be. Actually, Robin, if you're watching this, please leave Cody. He's terrible. Eventually, Cody wanted to adopt Robin's kids from a previous marriage, so he had to divorce Mary, uh, the only wife that he was legally married to, so that he could marry Robin and then adopt her kids. And that was probably the beginning of the end for Mary and Cody's relationship. And we'll talk about that in just a minute. Famously, Christine had a theory that um, being the third wife would be the best wife to be in the lineup because theoretically the first and second wife would have worked out the transition and be able to absorb a new wife fairly easily. That did not work because um, this isn't a cookie cutter situation and all people are different and have wildly different personalities. People aren't simple uniform pieces that just inherently interact well with a pre-existing family or the individual members of that family. Polygamy is complicated because people are complicated and you kind of have to be ready for that before you start the whole process or you end up with shit like this. We shut the door and I said, are we ever really going to need privacy? Are we ever going to have an intimate marriage again? And he just said, probably not. Cody often makes fat jokes, old jokes, pretty much any kind of jokes that, you know, are mean to your wife. He's callous with their feelings and he invalidates and gaslights them at every turn. Why would anybody, let alone four separate women, want to be married to this guy? Not only do you have to um, all put up with and share this terrible husband, but you have to live with all these other adult women, um, potentially dozens of children, pets, and other things you have to balance. Your jobs, your finances, your house payments, Payments, your medical bills, groceries, how you're going to discipline the kids, how you're going to schedule everything, who's going to watch the kids, how many adults are working. Um, if you have to live in secret, you know, how many sister moms are allowed to go to a kid's graduation without attracting attention? Like this is just a very complicated way of living and it has a lot of wheels turning. And yes, some women do love that. They talk about how much they just crave this huge family structure. They love all the kids. They love all the sister wives. They're all besties and that's great, but that is not what is happening in this family. <laughs> Another thing I would like to comment on is um, just how related a lot of the people are in this family. There's a strange relationship that we have in this. Mary and Janelle were friends, and then I became friends with Janelle. Janelle introduced Cheryl, her mother, to my dad, and they get married. My dad ended up marrying Cheryl before I married Janelle. So it's weird that Cheryl is both my dad's wife, my mom's sister wife, and my mother-in-law. <laughs> uh, don't let that distract you from the fact that other members of this family are also interrelated. Radar Online found that the husband and wife, Cody and Christine, are actually distant cousins. According to an Ancestry.com report, Christine's great-great-grandfather, Byron Allred, was brother to Nelson Allred, Cody's great-great-grandfather. While it is a very distinct relation, it still feels strange that they share ancestors, William Moore Allred and, and Orissa Angela Bates, which means that Cody and Christine are fourth cousins. There is yet another strange 
strange connection between the Brown family and Robin's ex-husband, David Jessup. Before Robin married Cody, she was legally married to David from 1999 to 2007. The name Jessup is a well-known name in the polygamist community. Meryl Jessup was the de facto head of the FLDS church from December 2007 to February 2011. Janelle's daughter Maddie um, is kind of related to her husband. Caleb is the brother of Cody's sister-in-law, Erica Brush Brown. So Erica married into the Brown family, making her non-blood related. Therefore, Caleb is not a blood relative, but someone who might be at family reunions. So yes, it may seem odd, but it is perfectly legal and not incestuous. When the show started being filmed was when Robin joined the family and it was also the same time that the Brown family went public with their marriages. And so the Browns had to, in the middle of the night, leave and flee to Las Vegas because the laws in Utah surrounding polygamy are extraordinarily harsh. In 2010, the Browns were investigated by their local Nehi Sheriff's Office in conjunction with the county prosecutor, Jeff Bumman. Bum. Bum man, he's a bum man, of, on the accusation of polygamy shortly after the debut of their TV show. In 2011, the Browns sued county prosecutor Bumman in an attempt to challenge their own charges and as a broader challenge to Utah's polygamy laws. They did this with the assistance of prominent GOP attorney Jonathan Turley. In 2012, the criminal charges against the Browns were dropped, but they persisted with their civil suit. In 2013, the Browns won their initial civil suit against Bumman. However, the state of Utah referred this to the regional appeals court. Then in 2016, the three-judge appellate panel overturned the lower court's ruling and sided unanimously with Bumman, stating that the Browns were never in actual danger of prosecution and that the law would be allowed to stay in place under the doctrine of mootness. Things would go quiet until 2020, when SB 102 would pass through the Utah legislature and be signed into law, decriminalizing polygamy statewide for individuals otherwise deemed law-abiding. How has filming this show, how has it changed your lives? Oh my gosh, it changes so much. Like in the polygamous lifestyle, you're really, really raised with fear to fear like the outside world and everything. Mm -hmm. And now here we are in the open and we get to be wives everywhere we go. We yeah. absolutely love it, but we're followed into bathrooms sometimes. That's not super fun. Exactly, <laughs> but the biggest thing is, is that we get to own our family 100% and, and our kids too. get to own their family 100%. That's very different from the way I was raised where I was in hiding so much of the time. Like I wasn't able to tell my friends about my family. Right. My dad has two wives and I was never able to share that with my friends. I was never able to bring them home because I was so afraid that my dad would be found out and be put in jail. Oh, right. wow. So that's why yeah. it's such a big deal for us to be able to be open and public. And that's why we did this is so that we can show that plural families should be able to live their life without fear of prosecution. Robin is completely right. In the 50s, there were raids on the polygamist communities that were located in Short Creek. Many modern-day polygamists have um, familial ties to these people. When these raids happened, hundreds of families were permanently torn apart and husbands were jailed. And this move was actually very unpopular with both the polygamist communities and secular society at the time. They all saw it as government overreach and they believed that the families should be allowed to exist peacefully as long as they weren't abusing anybody. But these raids had a huge blast radius and polygamist families consisting of consenting adults still live in fear to this very day. Partly because of the raids of the past, but also because Utah keeps going back and forth on how they want to legislate polygamy. Because for the longest time, being a polygamist or even just cohabitating together could land you a felony. I think the lawmakers think that by uh, decriminalizing this law, that it will make it so that it's a free-for-all and there will be more abuse that will happen. And what they're not realizing is that current law is so strict that it's making them so afraid to come out. And like a mom, she's got a daughter that's getting abused and she is so afraid of going to the police because she's afraid they're gonna tear apart her family and take her child away. So her daughter continues to be abused her whole life, which is like insane and horrific. When they moved to Las Vegas, they arguably had the best setup I've ever seen for polygamists. They had four separate uh, McMansions in a cul-de-sac and their backyards all joined together. I thought that was absolutely perfect because everybody gets their own space and their own little family unit, but then they can all hang out every day and play in the backyard, watch movies, have dinner together, all the good stuff. It was really the best of both worlds. Too bad that they just completely fucking gave up on that and moved to Flagstaff for no reason. They also, in their backyard, made a really cool like family tree design in the concrete and everybody put their 
hands in it while it was drying and it was very beautiful and I mean who's gonna want to live there now with a polygamist family's um hand tree in their sidewalk whatever they're they're dumb and it makes me so mad so with their marriage uh all the marriages on the rocks after this lawsuit um, and this stressful move to Las Vegas where all the kids had to, you know, say goodbye to all their friends and family and, you know, start over in this city that is not conservative, a city that does not have a polygamous community that we know of. Things just really got strained and uh, Mary sought the attention and love from somebody else. For many, many seasons, it was talked about probably way too long, but yes, Mary was catfished by a woman and we don't have time to unpack that. And yes, it does suck when you're catfished. It does suck when you're lied to, when you get your hopes up, when you get all excited, but she was, I think, technically emotionally cheating on Cody. I think he deserved it. But um, yes, that was a big, huge pot plot line. This huge ordeal about the catfish and um, the subsequent uh, divorce that Cody and Mary had to go through in order for Cody to um, adopt Robin's kids. Like, they're not even friends, I would say. I would say that they're just um, acquaintances because they don't live together. Uh, they don't like each other. And as you'll see in this next clip, uh, it almost seems like Cody just like, detests Mary and can't stand to be around her. Cody and Mary's relationship is really sad. I can't, I can't make him love me. So if I were to lean over and just kiss you right now, would you push me away? Um, no. <laughs> Romance and sex are saved for people who are in love. If Mary and I really wanted to be together, we would. Wow, that sure was awkward. I'm really glad that I'm not sealed to this man and don't have to spend eternity with him and uh, a bunch of other women that hate me. That sure would be unfortunate. Another thing that contributed to um, all the debt and stress for this family was all of their various failed businesses, um, namely the My Sister Wife's Closet business, which was run by Robin, um, and they sold gaudy jewelry and ugly shirts. Um, and there was lots of fights about it on the show because most of the wives weren't taking it seriously and I don't blame them for that. And they were like, why would we be putting money into this business when we're drowning over here with this business? And you know how it goes. Um, also notably, a lot of the wives are involved in MLMs, but this is like the only time somebody could make money off of an MLM because since they are low level celebrities, they might actually have a big a uh, pool of people in their downline to make money. IDK, Mary has actually been running a successful business um, outside of the MLMs, and that is Lizzie's Heritage Inn, a bed and breakfast located in Parowan, Utah, and she has owned it since 2017. And the home itself was previously owned by Mary's grandmother, and it is reported to be a longtime dream of hers to purchase this home and operate it as a bed and breakfast. I'm really glad that she has this business to pour her heart into. And it actually looks like a really cute place. It's got fantastic reviews. Apparently they have a chef there and they're accommodating to various diets and um, they allow pets. So sounds like a really cool place, actually. I will not make fun of Mary for that. I know it's not any of my business, but I did have James write me an entire page of notes about the uh, debt of this family. So I will try to summarize it a little bit for you. At least four mortgages on the Las Vegas homes. And then they bought this property in uh, Flagstaff that they're going to allegedly build um, either four homes or one big home or now apparently in the latest season I saw Cody was wanting his own house. It's like, why are you even married to these people if you don't want to spend time with them? But either way, apparently in the divorce, Robin's ex-husband got the house and she got all the debt. So seems fair to me since Cody was only married to Mary for the longest time and she only had one kid, he only paid for health insurance for that one kid, leaving the rest of the dozen of children uninsured. Um, and that really bit everybody in the ass when Christine's daughter truly had kidney failure and almost died. Um, she's like 10 or 11 now and she's doing fine, just to let you know. And then she had to pay uh, over half a million dollars for her other daughter who had to have a surgery for her scoliosis. Um, and Cody didn't help out with any of that shit and he didn't insure anybody. Quite the leader and headship there. I'm really glad that he's taking care of these women financially. While I'm sure that TLC is paying for some stuff, or at least I hope they are, shit. If you're going to exploit people, you could at least pay for their fucking medical bills. That's my message to 
TLC. In the last couple of seasons, it's been all about um, just how much the family hates each other, how awkward it is when they get together, um, how they hate it when Cody comes over because he disrupts everything. They all moved to Flagstaff seemingly out of nowhere. And they had like two or three years where they couldn't sell their gaudy ass houses in Las Vegas. And that was causing them all kinds of problems. And then Robin bought a house and then Christine bought a house while they were supposed to be renting so they could save money for this property. Can you see how this is snowballing and how stupid all this is? Meanwhile, uh, Mary's relationship with Cody is dead. Christine's relationship with Cody is dead. I don't know what's going on with Janelle. She talked a lot in the latest season about how she's thought about leaving and how she maybe doesn't want to be a polygamist anymore but then in the final episode she's like yeah you know i respect christine's decision to leave but i'm gonna stay like damn talk about a sunk cost fallacy and i just think it's a wonderful metaphor that this entire time they haven't built jack shit um and i think it is quite the metaphor for the arrested development that is also going on in their relationships see I can be smart too. I look at Cody as the head of our family. And to have the leader just be like, mm, I don't care anymore. Like, where does that leave us? And honestly, I'm at a point now where I see the family in many ways as an obstacle to, to my own goals. I'm just looking at Cody like, what the hell planet did you come from? We're in this plural marriage. You have agreed to this. Like that considering your family an obstacle to his own goals, well, that's about the most selfish thing I've ever heard. In the final episode of the latest season of Sister Wives, we learned that Christine has formally left the family. She packed up all of Cody's shit and kicked him out of the house. Sister Wives stars Christine and Cody Brown are going their separate ways. On Tuesday, Christine announced their split on Instagram, writing in a statement, quote, After more than 25 years together, Cody and I have grown apart, and I have made the difficult decision to leave. She went on to say that she and Cody will continue to be a strong presence in each other lives as they parent their children and support their family. She also asked for grace and kindness as they navigate through this stage as a family. In her caption, she thanked fans for being understanding and for having compassion and added several hashtags including change is good and change is scary. Cody also addressed the split on Instagram, writing in a statement of his own that Christine's decision to leave comes with a great deal of sadness. He added that the pair had enjoyed many years together and that he still still has a large amount of respect and admiration for her. He also echoed Christine by vowing to always remain committed parents as they move forward on different paths. The reality stars share a son and five daughters. In a teaser for the TLC show's upcoming season 16, Christine had addressed troubles in the couple's marriage. I'm not gonna talk to you. Why would I want to live on the same property with a dysfunctional marriage where right over there, he's got a full functioning marriage. Who would ever want to live like that? And she's now telling her her side of things. And I really, really, really am proud of her. I found out he wasn't attracted to me when we got married. And I just thought, oh gosh, well, that's terrible. But then he said, you know, he loved me now and everything. So I thought it was fine. And I thought we were fine. He just wasn't interested. He just wasn't. And we basically just had a non-intimate marriage completely. And we're like, we wouldn't even touch. We wouldn't even hold hands, nothing, not even hug, nothing. And then he goes, I have friends that have had relationships like this. They've slept separate on the couch for years. And I'm like, so you can have an intimate relationship with somebody else, but I get nothing. And you think it's fine that we have a marriage like this? How fucked up is that? That Cody is like, Oh, it'll be fine. We'll just keep up appearances. I'm never going to touch you or love you again, but we can say that we're married for the protection of my fucking fragile ego. Oh, I hate Cody. Christine also admitted that she no longer holds the same religious beliefs as her family. The Browns are members of the Apostolic United Brethren, which is a Mormon group that practices polygamy. In our church, polygamous women can leave. They're not trapped. They can leave if they want to leave and if it's not working, she explained. They have to go through proper channels and stuff, but they can get a release. I haven't been a member of that church for a long time, and I left a long time ago. 
Christine added, I just think that God's fine if I want to just be happy. Meanwhile, Cody said that he's comfortable with where Christine stands in her religious beliefs. She's free from that yoke of bondage, if you will, he said. Weighing in on Christine and Cody's fractured bond, Robin gets emotional while discussing how she hoped the exes would work it out. I have always wanted her and Cody's relationship to be strong, the 43-year-old said. I understand that she's feeling like she doesn't have other choices, but I wish that she decided to keep trying. Yeah, fuck the uh, 20 years of trying before that, right? Christine and Cody publicized their separation in November, though Robin still feels that they are not technically divorced. Christine says they're divorced, and technically, in my head, they're not. Because their marriage was done by our church's officials, she said, they haven't granted them a divorce. Of course Robin said that. She's always been a bitch. You know, we're still the one big happy family but she gets to find somebody that she really loves or you know whatever yeah and we we just make it bigger no no robin why don't you go ahead and finish that sentence christine gets to be happy and in love and you get what do you get robin jealousy debt an absentee father for your kids or maybe it's you know animosity from three other middle-aged women. That sure does sound like a fair trade, doesn't it? In happier news, Christine got her own spinoff. It is on the TLC website and it is called Cooking with Just Christine. I just want to have it explode with flavors. I'm Christine Brown. You know me from Sister Wives, but what you might not know is how much I love to cook. The truth. Yeah. I'm sharing some of my favorite recipes. They're not only delicious, but super easy to make. These look pretty great. They smell even better though. So get your apron ready because Cooking with Just Christine is coming to TLC.com. I don't think they're gonna make it to Tony. I'm probably gonna <laughs> eat them in the car. Nice. And I watched one of the episodes with her daughter, Truly, and it was very cute. And I might even um, do one of the recipes. It was German pancakes, and they baked them in the oven on a big old sheet pan. And it looked very convenient and easy to make and delicious. So, um... I love Christine, and she is my new queen. Future. Yeah. What does it look like for you? Will there be dating? Will there be marriage? I'm dating me. I'm getting to know me better. And I'm like, why don't I just figure out this awesome life and be present in it and just love it? I feel light. Yeah. And I didn't know life could be like this. I just found out about this um, today as I was editing. I love Christine so fucking much. Apparently she went on vacation with Janelle after the divorce and she's been living her best life. God damn it, my phone just went off. I'm gonna keep that in. Her kids are being super sassy on social media about it and they are not afraid to talk shit. Cause when I'm home, I do exactly what I should. Yet my girls can't see their siblings. What does the nanny do? Apparently, um, Christine's daughter Gwendolyn is a little badass feminist and she's bisexual and, um, you know what? I just love Christine. I love her so much. Um, and that's all I wanted to say. Oh, and Robin talking about, uh, Christine not being divorced in the church. I'm worried if this bitch is like, yeah, well, Christine's still sealed to us, so I don't want to see her in the afterlife or some shit. Anyway, I hate her. Goodbye. In conclusion, nobody is being abused in this situation, which is really something that I rarely ever get to say, and I do appreciate that. At least not in this household, nobody's being abused. But sometimes relationships need to end just because they aren't benefiting any of the parties involved. I don't want these women to leave Cody because I hate polygamy or that I think he's some evil sexist. I think he's just a shitty husband and three out of four of his wives are out of his league. And I'll leave it up to you to figure out which one of those wives I'm talking about. Some 16 seasons deep now, I think that we can recognize that we have watched a polygamist family expand, struggle, and realize just how much undue stress this arrangement has placed on their lives. Where once a proud plural family stood, united in defense of their faith and their loved ones, we can now only find the ashes of crumbled marriages, faded love, and angry kids who have no intention of carrying on this lifestyle. Under all of the multiplied love is a rickety foundation of spiritual abuse and social conformity. But do I think that any of them ever had a chance to truly decide that this is the life they wanted before they were already several kids and mortgages deep? Not for one damn minute. The Browns are a case study in how many religious principles developed in the context of their own culture and time period and how they simply do not translate to modern life. 
Mary wanted passion and romantic love that Cody had neither the time nor the energy to provide. Janelle wanted family cohesion and stability that no one else could commit to. Christine sought a voice and acknowledgement that neither her husband nor her sister wives felt she needed. And Robin, in all honesty, seems to desire an unattainable arrangement where she is both simultaneously a sister wife, but also the only wife. <laughs> And honestly, I think that Cody just wanted everybody to shut up and get along with the family because he said so. He wanted an 1800s plural marriage in 2020 and that shit just ain't gonna work. Women have rights now, Cody. And they don't have to put up with your bullshit anymore. Can polygamy be done successfully? Well, I don't have an answer for that one. But what I can tell you is that the Brown family sure as shit ain't doing it right. For a relationship like theirs to thrive, they would need constant communication, trust, respect, and stability. And the Browns seem to aim for the opposite of that. Stunted communication, consistent distrust, hurt feelings, and rapid relocation. The fact that they seem to be determined to make every wrong decision ever made, um, it's very surprising that they only just now lost a sister wife in 2021. This fundamentalist version of polygamy is irreversibly misogynistic, giving husbands the ability to receive an abundance of love and affection from multiple families, and leaving his wives fight and beg for the scraps that he leaves behind. Christine got tired of it, realized that she had other options, and got the hell out. And good for her. The Browns may have done the job that they sought out to do, multiplying love instead of dividing it, whatever that means, but maybe they should have spent more time dividing the love equally across the family. Trickle-down romance doesn't work any better than trickle-down economics, it would seem. Cody sucks, he got four wives when he didn't deserve one, and he will likely never talk to several of his children once they are old enough to start blocking phone numbers. Cody, I hate you. Sammy Hagar looking ass. Actually, you know what? Never mind. Sammy Hagar is cool, and Cody isn't. Sammy Hagar has a full head of hair, a happy wife, and kids who still like him. Sammy Hagar plays guitar and sells tequila. And Sammy Hagar probably could have housed all four of his wives with just one bank loan. <laughs> James wrote that. <laughs> but I wrote this. You're not a surfer, dude, Cody. You're from Wyoming. Well, I hope you all enjoyed this video. It was a very long time coming. Um, I guess I always wanted to uh, redo this video and now I get to. It was voted by my lovely patrons over at the Official Fundy Fridays fan club. So if you would like to be cool like them and vote for monthly episode topics, then follow me on Patreon. It's only $3. Before I get going, I want to tell you that I have a brand new design uh, over on my bonfire page. Um, it was actually Bonfire that designed this one and they did an amazing job uh, and it comes in all these pretty colors. Um, I called it the magical tea. Uh, it just reminds me of Lucky Charms. In fact, that's what we told the designers were like, you know, hearts, stars, rainbows, everything that's in Lucky Charms. So I thought that was really cute. It's also great because there's not a lot of religious imagery on there. I know some people are like afraid to wear that kind of stuff on their t-shirts. So you don't have to worry about that. I'm on a bunch of different social medias. I'm mainly active on Instagram. I rarely ever post on Facebook. My camera's dying so I'm trying to go fast. Uh, what else? Uh, make sure to check out the Hillsong documentary which is also on Discovery Plus which is where I watch Sister Wives. I love you and make sure that you have a uh, tornado safety plan if you live in the Midwest because it's tornado season. Thank you. Bye. What does the nanny do?